let's look at how to do an Ubuntu server installation. So first of all, I have a virtual machine I'm going to go ahead and create. Ubuntu, Ubuntu server 24.4. And it looks like it's Linux. Ubuntu, that's good. I want to make sure I have a nice base memory of 4 gigs because that's kind of nice. Um, I'll do two CPUs and I'll press next. I want the hard drive to be decently big. 25 gigs should be good for most things. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then I have this server right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on settings. And in the settings, I'm going to click on storage. And under my DVD, I'm going to go ahead and do a choose a disk file. And then I'm going to navigate down to my server. So I'll do this one right here. And click open. And then I have that ready. Now you can go look at the other settings as well. Make sure they're good. Uh, memory and everything that looks fine. The display. I don't really need to worry about this too much if I'm not going to be running a, well, a display. But if I am, I could I could put that up. Uh, storage. If I want an extra hard drive, I can add one down here under this uh, extra SATA drive. Uh, audio, don't really need to worry about that. Networking, I'm going to go ahead and connect this one to my NAT network. If you don't have a NAT network, you probably need to set it up. Um, and if you want to do something with two adapters, you could do two different adapters and click them through there. Um, serial ports, USB, and share uh, folders you don't need to do anything with. So this is good. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. At this point, I'm going to start the system up and see what happens. I want to install Ubuntu Server and let it go through its process right here. Screen gets a little bigger. Now at this point, it's going to try to connect up to the internet and see if I have an internet connection because it wants to download packages as opposed to just using the ones off the virtual DVD. I click. Uh, English, now I can decide if I want to update my installer or not. I'm going to go ahead and continue without updating. You can update the installer if you have trouble doing installation. And I'm going to do the Ubuntu server, not the minimize. Minimize um, doesn't really have much. It just has just the base system. Sometimes you don't even have what you might think is really important, such as your editors. Nano is not there and other things are not there. So go ahead and leave that there. I'm going to do DHCP. However, if I wanted to, I could configure actual IP addresses right there. I don't need a proxy. And then it's going to check to see which Ubuntu servers are the closest in order to get my updates as I'm doing my installation. So it's got my list figured out right there. It says this one's the closest one and I'll click done. Then I decide, do I want to use this entire disk the 25 gigs and yes i do if i wanted to i could um, turn off lvm or i can turn lvm on it doesn't really matter if i'm not going to be modifying it lvm does add an extra layer of uh, abilities so if i wanted to add an extra hard drive and i can make it an lvm partition and then join it into this group and i can expand drives if i wanted to uh, if I don't want to do that, I can just turn it off. Um, I can also do a custom layout if I want. We'll go ahead and do done. And just review all this. And then at this point, just click done. And continue. Now, it wants you to fill in your information here. Um, so I'm going to put my name in here, Joseph. My server name, I should put in something, maybe server.example.com. Um, but it doesn't want the entire name, just the first part. 
If you want to add a domain name, you can add it later. My username is going to be Joseph. And my password, I'll put in something super secret. And put another super secret password down here and click done. Now, the Ubuntu Pro allows you to have extra features. Um, you pay for this. If you don't want to, that's fine. You probably shouldn't unless you know what you're doing and click continue. I like to install an open SSH server because if you have an open SSH server, it allows you to be able to log in. So I'll do that. Install the open SSH server and click done. I don't need anything extra here. Lots of these things are nice, but I can always add them later. So I'll click done. And then it starts the installation process. So the installation process is going to be downloading packages, installing the kernel and all that stuff, and building everything. Um, and you just have to wait. So we'll go ahead and wait through this quickly and skip ahead. Now that the updates and everything has all been completely installed, you can see you end up at this screen where it says... Well, installation complete at the top, and I can go ahead and press the tab key. So tab down to reboot now, and press the enter key, and it will go ahead and reboot. It will ask me to then remove my drive or remove the DVD. So I'll click back over to this, and under settings, I can go to my storage. Click on here. You can see it's empty. Uh, if it's not empty, you can drop down and you can do a remove disk from virtual drive. And then that's taken care of. Shrink that out of the way. And go ahead and press enter. And it should boot up normally. I can probably get rid of this mouse integration thing. And then it's going to boot up into a text mode. Which is kind of important to be comfortable with that. Um, I can go ahead and type in my name, Joseph, and my super secret password that I entered in earlier. It logs in. At this point, it's good to test your network connection. So do ping google.com, see if you can get to it, press control C to end that. And so I can get there just fine. It's good to also perform updates, even though it should have downloaded updates or should have downloaded some things. I didn't update the installer, so maybe I didn't get everything. So I do an apt, sudo apt install, sudo apt update. There we go. And put my password in again. And once it has downloaded a list of the new updates, I can do an upgrade where it will download all of the updates. And you can see there are quite a few updates. Um, and so I can download all these, get my system fully up and going. And once that is complete, then my system is ready to go and I have a fully working Ubuntu server.